Good morning. Um, today's lesson is on the Singapore Flyer. If you're not familiar with what the Singapore Flyer is, it is a large Ferris wheel in Singapore. Um, we'll talk about it more when we get into it. Um, today's lesson is really a little bit about some trig practice and learning about the different parts of a sine wave and um, what trigonometry and sine waves have to do with one another. Um, it has to do with cyclical patterns and that's what we're going to do. Well, so let's start with good things. Good things today. Um, it looks like I finally got scheduled to do the addition on my house. That's always a good thing for me. My wife is extremely excited. I'm really excited to um, probably put a lot of that information on my other channel. So anyway, you can go check that out if you want. I'm not trying to make you do it, but it's entirely up to you to appreciate it if you did. Anyway, let's get into this lesson. So, first thing, the objective. The objective today is uh, students are meant to create a mathematical model of a periodical situation, and students are to understand and apply terms associated with periodic functions, such as sine waves, um, including period and amplitude. Okay, so let's move on. All right, let's review. Um, trig. There are three trigonometric functions that we typically use. There are three others that are the opposite. But there are sine, cosine, and tangent. Sine and cosine and tangent are of an angle, and that sine of that angle is uh, the ratio between certain sides of a triangle um, that that angle happens to be in. So let's take a look at that. Um, sine, as you can see here, sine is the ratio, sine of theta, theta is that angle here, is the ratio of the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Now, we mean opposite, that's opposite the triangle that has an angle theta, the side that is opposite of that angle, in other words, it projects to that angle or that side, that opposite side is AC, so that side over the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is easy. It's always the longest side, okay? Always the longest side is the hypotenuse. That's what it stands for. So sine of theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine of theta is the adjacent side or uh, is equal to the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse. So that is the adjacent. That's the side that's right next to the angle, and that's divided by the hypotenuse, which we described as the longest side in the triangle. We are talking about right triangles, and if you notice, a right triangle is created on each one of these three triangles. Tangent, of course, is the opposite side over the adjacent. So the tangent of theta is a ratio of the opposite side over the adjacent side. All right. Okay. Sine, cosine, tangent. So, katoa. That stands for sine equals opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine equals adjacent over hypotenuse. And finally, tangent equals opposite over adjacent. That's what those are for. Let's move on. The next practice we're going to deal with um, requires the use of our TI-84. I'm going to make sure that we put our TI-84 plus, uh, TI-84 plus in the radians to degree mode by choosing ma, um, mode and then moving the cursor over the degree. So let's do that real quick. <clears throat> so we should, if I'm not mistaken, if we go into mode, it should automatically reset to radians. Now I need to change that to degrees. So I'll move my cursor down to radians and over two degrees and then I'll hit enter and that'll change it to degrees. And then I'll hit second quit to go back where I'm. Now we'll go back and we'll visit uh, this calculator later. <clears throat> we just wanna make sure that we got that done so that we knew um, that we were set up correctly before we got started, all right? So let's go back to the slideshow. We're looking at a right triangle. It is a 56 degree angle on one of the angles that is not the right triangle. And we have 112 meters for the hypotenuse. We know this is the hypotenuse because it's the longest side. So we need to find the length of the vertical leg of the right triangle. Well, this is the vertical leg, and it just so happens to be adjacent to the 56 degrees. So we need to know which one we're going to use. We're looking for the adjacent side. So which one of these trigonometric functions? Um, uses a ratio of the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. Um, let's see, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. 
cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. There we go. That's the one we want. Cosine equals adjacent over hypotenuse. So we're going to look at it a little bit more uh, directly. Um, the cosine of 56 degrees equals the adjacent over 112 um, meters. Now, remember, we said the cosine of any angle is uh, equal to the ratio of the adjacent over the hypotenuse. We already given the hypotenuse and we're given the angle. So we're going to plug those in and we'll do a little uh, algebra. And uh, we can see that since this equals that ratio, therefore, we know the adjacent is equal to 112 meters times cosine of 56. Cosine of 56 is 0.559. We multiply that by 112 meters and we end up with 62.63 meters. So let's check and see if this works with our calculator. 112 meters times cosine of 56. So 112 cosine of 56. We should get the same answer. And we did 62.63. Notice I did a little bit of rounding. So next problem. All right. Uh, right triangle with the 74 degree um, angle has a side adjacent to the angle that is 76 feet long, okay? We wanna find the vertical leg of the right triangle. So the vertical leg just so happens to be the opposite side. So that means we have to use the tangent because tangent is opposite or is equal to the ratio of the opposite to the adjacent. So we're gonna divide opposite by adjacent and that will equal the tangent of 74. Um, we look at this carefully, move my picture. Um, the opposite is what we're looking for because that's the vertical leg of the right triangle. It's 76 feet times tangent of 74. Tangent of 74 is 3.49. Our answer is 265.04. So I'm going to dispense with doing that on the calculator. You should know how to do it now. You're just going to do this work right here. Once you do it, put it into the calculator and you'll get your answer. All right. This triangle has a 35 degree angle. And the hypotenuse is 44.5 centimeters. They're asking for the vertical leg, which just so happens to be the adjacent. So we have the hypotenuse, and we want to know the adjacent. We have the angle, so all we need to do is find which one has adjacent over hypotenuse. That is cosine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So we're going to do a little math here. Cosine 35 degrees equals the ratio of the adjacent over 44.5 centimeters, which is the length of the hypotenuse. Um, therefore, the adjacent is 44.5 centimeters times cosine of 35 degrees. Cosine of 35 degrees is 0.819. We multiply that by 44.5 centimeters. And we get 36.45 centimeters for this vertical leg. All right, let's move on. Um, we could do that in the calculator, but like I said, I think we need to go on and not worry about how to put that in the calculator. I did it once. If you really need to see it, you can either see me in tutorials or go back and look at that part of the video. Find the vertical leg of this right triangle with a 449 inch adjacent uh, side next to a 56 degree angle. So what has uh, the vertical leg? What is it? it? Is the opposite? We know the adjacent. Opposite over adjacent is the tangent of theta. Theta is 56. Do a little math. Opposite is 449 inches tangent of 56, which is 1.48. The length of that opposite side is 664.52 inches. All right, so I'm gonna introduce you to the Singapore Flyer, I told you I would. It cost over $200 million to construct, stands a stunning 165 meters tall. It is destined to be the biggest attraction in Singapore. Um, it was one of the biggest attractions in Singapore 10 years ago. That's when this textbook was created. So. Let's move on though, let's look at it very carefully. Um, this is a view inside one of the passenger gondolas. This, you sit in it, and if you go back and you look carefully, look how many of those gondolas they have. And they charge each person that gets on there a certain amount. I don't know what they charge in yen or whatever they charge, but it's probably adds up, adds up to a lot of money. Um, they're gonna have to put a lot of people on there to, to make up that $200 million, right? So, but we're gonna draw an accurate diagram of the wheel on a coordinate grid using the dimensions that we're given. Now, this is a really good example of what I'm looking for for your project, okay? It's a good circle and it spans 150 meters between 15 meters and 165 meters. You see the 150 meters, these are 10 meter ticks on the 
y-axis or the vertical axis. Uh, so it goes up from 150, 160, and then halfway to 170, that's 165. Down here, the base is 10, 15 meters. And it's actually marked at 15 meters, okay? We do have the distance from the center of the circle to the out, the rim of the circle is 75 meters. That is the radius. We are. Two times the radius is the diameter. The diameter of the Ferris wheel is 150 meters. All right. So if theta, that's this angle right here, which is, if it's 30 degrees, how high is the gondola off the ground? Now we can calculate the height of the center of the wheel by adding the radius to the height of the wheel above the ground. Both are given. 75 meters is the radius and 15 meters is the height of the above the ground. The center is 15 plus 75 or 90 meters. And if you look at the tick marks, you can see that 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. So the difference from the length of the vertical leg, this length right here, that red portion adjacent to this angle, which we know is 30 degrees, kind of foreshadowing there. And this height right here, if we find the difference there, that will give us this length right here. We're looking for the adjacent side. Notice the hypotenuse is also the radius. So the length of the adjacent side A is cosine of 30 degrees. Wait, yeah, equals A over, this is, I don't know why the A equals is there. Let's dispense with that. A over 75 meters, or A equals 75 meters times cosine of 30. So A is 64.95 meters. So the distance from the center, this red adjacent line A, is 64.95 meters. Now, since 64.95, we know these two lines now, we can find the difference. The height off the ground is 25.05 meters. We're gonna find the height of the gondola as it goes all the way around. And then we'll plot that height over time. We'll, we'll talk about that here in a minute. Well, let's talk about the periodic function. A periodic function is a function that repeats its values in regular intervals or periods which repeat over intervals of length two pi. Yes, two pi. All two pi means is what? Two pi. Pi times the diameter is the circumference. But the length of this is always two pi. They're used to describe oscillations, waves, and other phenomena that exhibit periodicity. Sine waves are examples of these. So amplitude is the magnitude of change in the oscillating variable. With each oscillation, within an oscillating system. Yes, oscillating means it goes back and forth. The amplitude is a vertical distance from peak to zero. So let's look at it in different ways, different size waves. One oscillation is when it goes from zero to zero. We have this arrow that this curved line goes over and under and over and under. Well, that average distance between the peak and the valley is that, uh, that's the zero time or the zero, uh, I don't know what you're gonna call it. Anyway. It's the zero point. So um, wavelength is also considered uh, one oscillation. See, we go from the middle to the middle. A wavelength is from peak to peak. We can also measure wavelength or period uh, between valley to valley. Um, this is as time goes on. We're measuring the height of a wave as it moves along. Um, this is air pressure. Same thing. Air pressure can go up and down. Uh, this is in milliseconds. Amplitude is the distance between this line, which separates the middle of the peak and the valley, and either the peak or the valley. The amplitude is either way. It's half of the distance between the peak and the valley. Um, we call these troughs and crests, peaks and valleys, um, apex and nadir. I've heard them called all kinds of things. They're all the same thing. Um, whatever suits your uh, your needs, uh, you will need to know at least crest and trough or peak and valley, okay, for this anyway. Sine wave amplitude. Um, notice elevation. This measures height. And we'll talk about the sine wave again in the next uh, uh, six weeks. We'll have another project coming up in another couple weeks after, right after the uh, Ferris wheel project. Amplitude is half the differences of the maximum and minimum values, the peak and the valley, okay? So we're gonna create a graph showing the height of the gondola over the Ferris wheel over time. We're gonna use what we have. We have sine waves and we can see it. By calculating the height of the gondola at several points, say 12, as it travels around the Ferris wheel, 
We can create a graph of these points using time on the horizontal axis. This is time. See, it's measured here on the horizontal axis. And we'll use height on the vertical axis or the y-axis. That's measured, labeled here. An example of this graph is, show, uh, graph is shown on the right. Now, I want you to notice the gondola is going to be at the top of this Ferris wheel at 180 degrees. Okay? So, as it's going around, think about it going around this circle. It's going around the circle. It gets all the way to the top, and that's the max height. That's at 180 degrees. comes all the way back around to the bottom, and that's back to zero or 360 degrees. Halfway up is 90. Halfway down is 90. This is halfway down. See, the, the height is going down. And then when you get to the bottom, it has no choice to go back up. That's halfway up. And it does it over and over again as it goes around. All right. The Singapore Flyer, shown in the label graph to the right, is 165 meters tall. And it has a diameter of 150 meters and has a speed of 26 centimeters per second. We need to calculate the circumference. And then after we do that, we can calculate the time to circuit the Ferris wheel. So let's think about this. First thing we know is that the circumference is pi times the diameter. So the circumference is pi times 150 or 471.24 meters. So the distance traveled for a gondola that goes all the way around the circle of a diameter of 150 is 471.24 meters. All right, so we, did, we need to calculate a common unit of measure. So one meter is 100 centimeters, so The circumference in centimeters is 47,124 centimeters. Now, that isn't necessary for the circumference, but we do need that to calculate the time to circuit the Ferris wheel because the speed of the gondola is in centimeters per second. Um, and actually, it's exactly 26 centimeters per second. So we know the distance formula. Distance equals rate times time. So since time uh, distance equals rate times time, time equals the distance or the rate. Okay. So the distance that this, uh, the gondola travels around the Ferris wheel is the circumference, and the rate is the speed. We're given both. So the time to circuit this Ferris wheel is 47,124 centimeters divided by 26 centimeters per second, which means that we travel around in 1,812 seconds. We divide that by 60 seconds per minute, and it takes exactly or almost precisely 30 minutes to travel the whole thing. Now, okay, so let's put this into practice. Using trigonometry, we're gonna calculate each column for each measure of time. Remember that it takes 30 minutes to circuit, so we find measurements every six minutes, or every five minutes, I apologize. I, we have six positions around the Ferris wheel. So if we travel five minutes around the Ferris wheel, how far will we go if it takes 30 minutes to get all the way around? Well, we just simply divide 360 by 6 because there's six positions going around. So that means in five minutes, we'll be 60 degrees into the circuit around the Ferris wheel. That means in 10 minutes, we'll be 120. 15, we'll be all the way to the top. Every five minutes, we move one-sixth of the way around. So how do we calculate the vertical leg of the triangle? Well, if you remember, the cosine of theta equals uh, adjacent over hypotenuse. So we call this length from the center to this point A. Now, you're going to see some numbers that are going to look kind of funny. We're going to get some negative numbers. But I'm going to explain to you how that works when we get to that point. So when you see negative numbers, don't fret. All right? Now, notice that I've actually given the letters for these other points. This 15 meters is called the base height. I call it BH. This distance between the circle and where the gondola is, is we call M. It's the distance between the base height and the height of the gondola. And uh, we know that the radius minus this A is that, that distance. That's what we're looking for. All right, so what is the vertical leg of the height of the right triangle? It's the adjacent, the adjacent. So we're gonna multiply hypotenuse times cosine of theta. Now, when the gondola moves around the Ferris wheel, does the distance from the center change at all? If it's in a circle, it should not. The distance should always remain the same. So that means that wherever this is, that hypotenuse triangle is always going to be 75 meters. Even at 90 degrees, the hypotenuse is 75 meters. 
Okay, so let's get into this. The first one, 75 meters times the cosine of zero. Cosine of zero is one, so one times 75 meters is 75 meters. At five degrees, we'll be at 37.5 meters. The cosine of 60 degrees times 75 meters is 37.5. At 120 degrees, it's minus 37.5. Well, we'll see what we do with that in a minute, and I'll show you how that works. At 180 degrees, it's minus 75 meters. At 20 minutes, it's the same distance as at 10 minutes. At 25 minutes, it's the same distance away from, as five minutes. And at 360, it's the same distance at zero minutes. We know that radius is uh, 75, and we're going to subtract this number from A. So 75 minus 75 means that M is zero, OK? 75 minus 3750 means M is 3750. 75 minus a minus 35 means that M is 11250. 75 minus a minus 75 is 150 meters. Now think about this for a second. We're measuring this distance M from the base height, the bottom of the circle, the height from the ground. We're trying to find this distance here. If this distance is positive, it can only exist on this side of the circle. When it becomes negative, we're adding to it. See what happens when you subtract a negative number? It adds to this M. So we have 75, which is the distance from the center or from the bottom of the circle, bottom of the Ferris wheel to the center. And then we're adding this distance to it. So At 180 degrees, it makes sense. 75 minus 75 is 150 meters. We should be at 165 degree or 165 meters at the top, right? Because the Ferris wheel is 165 meters. So 15 plus 75 plus 75 is 165. We'll see that here in a minute. Notice that these measures are the same. Just like these measures are the same. The total height of the capsule or the gondola, 15 meters at zero degrees or at zero minutes, five minutes, we're at 52.5 meters, one-sixth of the way around the Ferris wheel. At 10 minutes, we're 127.5 meters above the ground, um, and 120 degrees around. Halfway around, at 15 minutes, we're at 165 meters. Now that makes sense, because halfway around, we should be at the very top. Um, at 20 minutes, we're at 240 degrees, so right around here, we're only at 127.5. Notice we're the same distance away we were uh, away from the ground that we were at 10 minutes. 25 minutes, we're back at 52.5. Uh, same distance that we were above the ground at five minutes. Finally, at 360 degrees or zero degrees, 30 minutes later, we make it around. Now we're going to graph this height versus time. You can see the sine wave. We're going to use stat edit function on the TI-84 Plus to enter the time into L1 column and corresponding height into L2. And we're going to turn the scatter plot on the calculator using second stat plot, enter, enter, and then zoom nine to graph. You should get something like this. Um, just to prove it, let's take a look um, on our TI-84. Let's enter this, these values in there. Now, we want to see what it looks like. We've got to turn stat plot on. So let's second stat plot. It's off right now, so I'm going to hit enter so I can adjust it. I'm going to move the cursor over from off to on and hit enter. And now the stat plot is on. I want to see what it looks like, so I'm going to go zoom 9. 9 is zoom stat. All that means is it's going to put all the data values that you put into your stat calculator, and uh, it enters them. So stat is 9. I'm going to put 9, and boom, there we go. Let's get into this a little bit further. We're going to calculate the best fit formula by using the sine regression, okay? So let's take a look and see what that looks like. And this time we're going to do a best fit for a sinusoidal function. So we already have our values in there in stat edit, right? Stat, it's in there. So we want to calculate a regression for best fit. So we're going to arrow over after we hit stat to calc, and we're going to scroll down until we find something that has to do with sine waves. And lo and behold, right there next to logistic is sine regression. A sine regression looks at the data values in, in there, and it finds a best fit for a sine wave. 
Now, each one of the variables on the sine regression has something to do with those values or those little um, the parts of the sine wave we discussed. And we'll get into it a little more later. But this is the values you're looking at. The format is y equals a times sine times bx plus c, uh, quantity closed, plus d. So the A has something to do with it, the B has something to do with it, the C has something to do with it, and the D has something to do with it. Do you notice it's 75? What do you think the 75 has to do with it? 90 also has something to do with it. Do you notice that the center of the Ferris wheel is at 90? That center line of the sine wave is also 90. That's the vertical shift. A, the 75 very likely has something to do with the amplitude. So we're going to use this, but we're going to plug all these numbers into y equals. I'm going to take a picture of it real Good. quick. There we go. Um, and I'm going to go into y equals. I'm going to put it in there now. A, which is 75 times, we've got sine. So I'm going to put sine. B, which is 0 0.21. I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, I'm going to round. And it says x, right? x plus C, but it's a negative, so minus 1.57. I'm going to close that parentheses. And then I add D, right? D is 90 plus 90. Now, when I go to zoom 9, we're going to see what does this actually do. Zoom 9. Okay. Now, the problem here is that we've changed this to uh, degrees. We need to change it back to radians because it's moving in pi fashion, not in the degree fashion. So let's go in here and I'm gonna change this mode back to radians. Enter, and then I'm gonna go second quit, zoom, nine. And now our curve follows that perfectly. Right. So the answer that, uh, is very specific. Notice I wrote it down exactly as I put it in there. Each of these variables describes a portion of the sine wave. Well, like I said, we'll talk about that either place this equation into y equals in the calculator and graph to see if the curve matches the scatter plot, and it does. There we go. Okay, so over the course of three rotation, your scatter plot looks like this. Notice that the time keeps marching on, but this moves in a cyclical fashion. We're going to go 15 to 165, back to 15 to 165, back to 15, and it does not no matter how many times they rotate that Ferris wheel. No. All the information we discussed is going to be required for your Ferris wheel project. Um, you do have one assignment today. You'll have another assignment tomorrow. Um, the assignment today is trig uh, practice. The assignment for tomorrow is going to be doing uh, a table like that uh, around a small Ferris wheel. Okay. So um, in the meantime, y'all get those assignments done and be blessed. Be a blessing. <laughs>